talk Mavs with me. What's going on today? Ben, what's up, man? What's going on, Thank man? you for finally, th- you for finally having me on the show. <laughs> I hear you I loud and clear. Everything's going great on your end, man. Huge fan. Thanks for having me uh, be a guest on the show. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm a huge fan of yours, man. You, This guy has a press pass to the Mavs, to the Rangers. I'm sure you're probably working on the Cowboys, which uh, that, that would be amazing. But uh, this guy is always in the building, always up to date on what's going on with the Dallas sports. So it's always it's great to get you on, first of all. Oh, man, appreciate that, man. We just, just trying to work, trying to make sure that I'm doing my job. And the other hosts that I have on my show, man, they're way incredible to me. Right now, all the work that they do, I'm just a spectator. I'm trying to get better than them, too. They already put steps ahead of me, so I'm just trying to catch up now. Definitely. Um, so before we talk about Mavs and NBA and everything, talk about your show, uh, what time it comes on, what, what it's about, and what you guys do. All right, my show is Mo Sports Talk. We've been on for six years running in the Dallas area. Not only do we cover the Dallas full force sports, but we try to cover every aspect of every sport in the sports world. Uh, we talk sports, movies, sneakers, video games, anything that comes to mind. You know, it's four of the greatest minds in the world. You just get us together in, in one studio, man. You never know what's going to happen. We're on every Monday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can catch us on the After Party radio station, the THA After Party Radio. Also download the app, which is on the Google Play Store and Apple App Store. And also check out our website, mosportstalk.com. Definitely. Go check it out. Dope show. They got great guests. Um, some, something that I enjoy listening to as well. Um, it, it's a very interactive chat room, so if you hear me giving people shout outs and, and saying what's up to people, uh, don't worry. We got Big L in the chat room. We got Sydney Jackson. What's up? I know you've been trying to listen in to the show for a while, so I appreciate you for coming on. So, Let's let's talk about these Mavs. How are you feeling about the Mavs this year? And are you surprised with their performance so far? Well, right now with the Mavs this year, this is what they're in a full rebuild. This is the quote unquote second year of the rebuild. You know, Dirk is on his way out. This is his twentieth season. No other player has done this with one team besides Kobe Bryant. So right now they're trying to piece together a good enough roster to have when they're pretty much like retired. Oh, so, sounds like the phone was cutting out a little bit. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, good. So, right now, they're uh, on a competitive losing, but they're good for three quarters, but there's always one quarter where they melt down and, you know, things go downhill, especially like last night from the the, uh, the Mavs Portland game where, you know, they end up losing by double digits. But, I mean, their team is not good enough yet because they're still in rebuild mode. So that's pretty much what the state of the Mavs are right now. They're 14th in the West. You know, the record is not all good right now, but I understand what's going on. A lot of fans don't. They want them to get back to the championship, you know, winning ways and things like that, which that's understandable. But... At some point in time, you have to rebuild. You have to start over. And right now, I'm just glad that they finally buckle down and start to rebuild when Dirk gets ready to leave. Yeah. And the thing with with Dirk, Dirk's great. Uh, but we've been knowing this for a while. People here in Dallas have been knowing this for a while, that Dirk only has so much longer. And now we, we can see him starting to exit out of the tunnel for the very last time and Dirk Dirk is the first ballot Hall of Famer but I think we've given too much power to him and I think we've allowed what it, you know people come to Dirk you know Cuban will come to Dirk or Carlisle will come to Dirk or whoever and say hey we're looking to make this move do you think this is a good idea and I think we have probably put too much stock in um, in, in maybe trusting Dirk and, and giving him opportunities to make you know suggestions or decisions and I, I think that backfired on us a little bit you think I'm think I'm crazy in thinking that 
No, not at all. I think it may be the other way around as how you see players so, quote-unquote, too much loyalty, which everything that happened with the championship season and the collective bargaining agreement that, that came in, the whole championship roster was gone because they didn't want to sign back on to one-year deals and wait to get a max deal after that due to the new CBA. So when it comes down to that point, I mean, you're, they're still winning and still playing games. But, you know, Dirk has taken multiple pay cuts, you know, to try to do their best with the front office with Mark and Donnie to try to get free agents here. But the only thing wrong with that is, you know, I don't think nobody really want to stay in Dallas for those multiple months and just stay here and play here. Because just like with the Kobe situation in L.A., whatever big name agent, free agent goes there, they're always going to be second field to Dirk, no matter how old they are and how long they've been into the league. So with all the free agent moves that have been happening every single summer to try to get more help here to help Dirk out, to finish out his last year to get back to the finals, it didn't help out because it's too much loyalty has been shown to Dirk and Dirk has shown too much loyalty to the front office, which I understand. You don't want to go anywhere. You establish yourself and your career and your family here. But when it comes to a point where you really want to win and get back to that point, it may got to a situation where Dirk may have had been traded. But there have been plenty of talks about that. But also, he stays here. But there's not really a lot to attract here in Dallas to try to get big name free agents here. That's why that's why you're stuck with a lot of Plan B, Plan C players that come about, which is not really good enough. So, I mean, they put all their eggs in one basket. You know, example, you know, Darren Williams didn't come here. He chose Brooklyn. And you have DeAndre, the DeAndre Jordan situation. Even before that, you had Alonzo Mourning, who's a free agent, who showed verbal agreement to come to the Mavs, but then he ended up going to the Nets. So whatever Cuban or Donnie is doing, you know, it's not really working out in their favor when it comes to free agency. And I think once it backfires, Dirk has taken a pay cut. Other players have came here and gone through free agency. But it's just not been working out for them. And that's why you see them barely making the playoffs to, like, not making the playoffs at all. Yeah, uh, I agree with you right there. And and that's that's the thing about uh, about these Mavs. They, after the championship year, every single year we've tried to get somebody. We tried to get the big fish. We try to tell people, well, you don't have to pay t- state tax here. Like, these guys make so much money. That is so minimal that is that is such a minimal attraction is that you don't pay taste state tax now i wonder if it'll change when dirk's dirk leaves but i highly um i i I doubt it because you're coming into a team that's very very young and that leads me to uh dsj we got uh dennis smith jr i'm excited about the kid he's got hops out of the out of the gym what how exciting is it watching him live? And uh, what, what do you? What's your thoughts on what's uh, the horizon for for DSJ? Well, DSJ, he is an amazing talent, very athletic. Like you say, a hop out the gym. What's more surprising about me is his, you know, work ethic. I mean, especially like towards his shooting. His shooting was not the best at first, but now. You know, he's hitting three-pointers. He's being more aggressive, shooting. Going to the basket, that's no problem because he's a great slasher. But with him taking the time out to start shooting more threes and shooting more mid-range jump shots and trusting in his jump shots, I think that says a whole lot about him. He's a low-key great rebounder also, by the way. A lot of people have not noticed that. And his vision on the court and with the lineups that he has been playing in under Carlisle, He's done a very, very good job as for what I've seen so far. The defense is still, you know, kind of iffy, but, you know, I think that'll get better in time. I mean, just by Carlisle having him start and showing more praise and value into him says a whole lot. I never seen really, even before like the announcement of getting, of getting Dennis Smith Jr., I never seen him so happy about a lottery pick ever since he was with the Pistons. And so him <laughs> right. invest, yeah. <laughs> And so him investing his time in the Dennis Smith Jr., you know, me and his family going out to, to where he's from, uh, Fayetteville, and just spending so much time and investing in him. I never seen, you know, Carlisle so happy 
you know, with this young guy. And it's unfortunate that he's not playing with the full roster because I was expecting him and Seth Curry to be starting. You know, Seth Curry is out with a, with a tibular injury still. He may be back maybe after the All-Star break. But, I mean, for right now, for what I've seen from Dennis Smith Jr., I mean, he can only get better. And him putting up a triple-double last week, I mean, getting double-doubles now and passing the ball, you know, more effectively, he's great. And I'm really expecting to see him, you know, get higher and higher in value with his play for years to come here. Yeah, and I was I was excited to get him. I'm going to be honest, though. I kind of wanted Malik Monk. Also, I was yeah. thinking about uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now N- Nila Takina. I was definitely not on that that bandwagon. Some people were saying we should have got Frank. Uh, I didn't agree with that. And uh, my biggest question was, can DSJ stay healthy? And it looks like he's been able to do that for the most part. Obviously, he's, he uh, was dealing with the, with an injury kind of early in the season. But this kid is, I would compare him to. Westbrook. I've talked about that when he got drafted. I think now I don't know if he's got that straight killer instinct like uh, like Westbrook has, but I think just his abilities, and I think as long as he can, continues to improve his shot, we got we have a star for the future here. And uh, man, DSJ is, and especially like you said, for Carlisle to be that involved with him, that is that speaks volumes right there because because Carlisle. Some some players like him, some players hate him, and you know I wanted to ask you this. I'm in Dallas. A lot of people out there listening. I know you've seen Carlisle. I know you guys probably heard interviews or whatever. But is he is he a jerk in person? Have you have you asked him a question and he just looked at you like that's a dumb question? <laughs> <laughs> man, look, man, Carlisle does this to every single guy in the media. He may be a jerk at times. You know, a hole maybe to a certain extent, but in general, he's a genuine guy. He he loves the media. He loves us, no matter how many times he'll say what he says to us. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, yeah, it has been it has been situations where questions has been asked, and he will let you know in the most blunt way possible. He won't say it's a stupid question, but he will give you that look, and he will twist it around in other ways possible. But I love, you know, I love him to death as a coach because he's very blunt, very honest, and he he will tell you like it is. The players love him too because they stay on him the most, even though he will get mad at them at most. As what you've seen with the Salah misery situation, the game before the Portland game, where you know, you know, misery got kicked out, and he basically told uh, Salah, "Hey, you only got two effing points. Get the f off the court, like literally." <laughs> That's that's you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, he though. only he gonna let yeah he gonna let you know how you feel about his players. So I'm pretty sure that's not the the only time that he made, like he told Misery off. So yes, he is. I I can't say he is a jerk, but I'm going to be biased here. It's it's good, you know what I'm saying. It's good for that team because they need a coach like this. Yeah, yeah. All right. So trade deadline. Trade deadline is coming up. Um, There's a lot of talks of Wesley Matthews getting traded. There's a lot of talks of putting Erlens Noel into that trade. Do you see both or any or one of them getting traded before the deadline? Good question. Well, right now, the only trade value that they have is Wesley Matthews. I mean, Wesley Matthews has been playing very, very well, way better than I expected. His shooting percentages has been up. But as far as like how young the teams are and how the contracts and everything are right now, Wesley Matthews is the only trade piece, but I really don't even see them making any kind of moves. I heard that they was involved in a three-way trade with Sacramento and Cleveland, but I think they backed out of that because the Mavericks wasn't really getting anything in return besides maybe like some younger guys that's cash. The only trade piece that they have is Wesley Matthews. But for right now, I really don't even see them making any moves right now to just find a guy that they want. If it's for like an all-star player, that's not going to happen. Yeah, to me, it, it's difficult to try to make a trade when you're when you're this bad. You know, you can, you can, you're, you're a seller more than you are a buyer at this point in time.